we have Christina. She's not quite in the studio with us, but she's on the line, Los Angeles. Hi, Christina, KKLA, that great station. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Yeah. How can we help Hi, you? Hi, thank, thank you for taking my call. Sure. Um, my question is about how to deal with deep hidden woundedness. Deep hidden woundedness? Yeah, like um, I've been on a journey of healing like most people have, and I know that there's a lot of, like, for instance, um, I don't have a lot of my memories from my childhood. Okay. Like, uh, I only have, like, maybe half a dozen or a dozen memories. And I know that it's because of the things that, um, the environment that I was raised in. What was that environment? Um, it's because of the environment that I was raised in. What was that environment? And what was that sound? Did, um, was that were you uh, raised I with a lot of ducks? Somebody sent me something. Sorry about that. Oh, so um, that's your... your uh, <laughs> I see. I have one of those phones that does everything. I'm okay. so sorry. Well, what, is, what is the insurance company? It sounds, it sounds like a duck. Affleck. Affleck. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we turn, we turned this into an Affleck, Affleck commercial. commercial. Hello? Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, well, hi. Yeah, take well, your time. So you were raised with a bunch of quacks is what you're telling yeah, us. Yeah, exactly. All right. So, uh, Christina? Uh-huh. If you hear that, pull it away. But anyway... Uh, so you, you don't mem- remember much about your childhood because of this environment that was so bad. What was the, the horrible environment? Well, um, my parents were very neglectful as well as abusive. How do you know that? Uh, well, I do re- I mean, I remember some things that happened, and they, there was a lot of neglect. Like, uh, like they kind of just provided the home and expected me to do everything else for myself. Mm-hmm. Okay, all right. Um, so that's tough. I mean, I do, re- I do remember those kinds of things. When I say I don't have my memories, like I don't really remember a lot of like. I mean, to only have like a dozen memories of like nine or ten years, eleven years of one's life seems like kind of well, why, not right. Why are you asking us? Like, what's what's the angst underneath this? What's yeah. driving this question? Well, I see patterns in my life, and I know that there's a lot under there. Um, I know that, well, like, okay, and, and I feel like, uh huh. Go ahead. And you're thinking to resolve the pattern, you've got to get under there. Yeah, like things have been. I've always been very uh, reflective about where I come from and why people do things and why I do things. Yeah. And um, w- you know, through my journey, God has been really revealing that there's that there's a lot under there. You know, I've gone to counseling and. Um, I read books and, you know, had a lot of healing. But then, like, the deeper crux, like, when there's a lot there, like, you just continue on this as I've been and just keep getting the counseling and the therapy or the prayer. Well, get, give us something specific. This is all too theoretical. Yeah. Okay. Well, specifically, um, like, I... I struggle with like deep feelings of being alone mm-hmm. and feeling kind of like God picked me up and threw me out into the world. Picked you up and threw you what? Thrown out to the world? Threw, threw me out into the world. Okay, now I'm going to interrupt you for a second. As you say that, did I hear your voice crack a little bit? Yeah. Okay, what are you feeling when you talk about that? sad okay Powerful. all right aloneness is a very sad place because there's a wish underneath to not be alone to be listened to to be cared about if i were you i would forget worrying about digging up everything and deal with what's right present in your lap right now and that is when you start to talk to somebody about how you feel there is a feeling there that you could express and have someone else listen to and when they understand it you're no longer alone and that alone place inside is going to be transformed that's a new pattern you talked about patterns in your life and all you have to do is start right where you are and beginning to talk about what you feel now and what that's going to do is it's going to develop new patterns we don't we don't develop new patterns by unearthing old ones 
we develop new patterns by living out new patterns. So I would, I think you've got a lot that's not that hidden. I mean, it, 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 it came up pretty quickly, right? Yeah, it did. I mean, I have a pretty, when I know what's healthy, so I do what's healthy. Like I'm in community. I, Good. I share with people like, you know, my deeper feelings that I wasn't comfortable with before I've dealt with like isolating myself. So I don't do that. Yeah. I keep, Okay. What but I'm now, doing and how I'm feeling well, in the light. Has ev- anybody still, has, uh-huh. okay? Has anybody ever said that you're confusing in this feeling that God threw you out in the world? Um, that you're confusing God with with your parents? Yeah, I mean, my parents are pastors, so I'm I am dealing with what that looks like for having okay my it, parents <clears throat> be like you know behind the pulpit and yeah, do what well, they did you know home. what. If you had lived in the Garden of Eden, God would not have let that happen. Right. Once we got outside of that and we had free choice, you can get hurt by somebody. And, and it, right. isn't, it isn't God. It's, it's your parents. And I think, well, I understand that. Uh, I huh? think that you can end up in a role of always wondering, always looking back, always dealing with. And it is tougher to get to a place where you're just dealing with today. But that's where the new life is found, is in today, like Henry's saying. And I think you can make that transition. Uh, Mylon, you have a comment? Are you in a relationship with anybody right now, Christina? Um, I actually was, but that's part of my big wanting to know what's going on because I don't really choose people who I feel are, are good choices for me where I am. Right. Well, it's sim- it's easy for you to pick someone that creates a similar level of pain. Or and even like you. my most recent ex is like he's has a lot of integrity and character and is really kind, but he wasn't a believer. Well, l- let me just say that what Henry said a minute ago is really important because as you learn to bring your real feelings into a present day relationship, especially in primary relationships. What happens is is you your brain forms new pathways and you learn to regulate in new ways that you've never learned to do before. And so what happens is you develop a capacity to do things you've never done before. And that is the healing journey. And your, your first question was, how do I heal from the deep hurts of the past? And it's by practicing intimacy in safe community now and especially into primary relationships. And primary relationship will take you to a totally new level of needing to work on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think sometimes people kind of operate under this pop psychology idea that, you know, insight is going to produce cure Mm -hmm. or that some kind of archaeological dig is going to produce a cure. Looking for the it thing that just makes it... Yeah, if I could just understand. And, And I remember... Um, one of the most life-altering in terms of how I think about the world and growth and cure and change in people was one day when I was in graduate school, Bruce Naramore, so, hmm. so somebody was talking about you know, getting insight, insight-oriented therapy and all this kind of stuff, and Bruce said it's very important that you understand that insight does not produce cure. Mm-hmm. Cure produces insight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow, brilliant! And <clears throat> that is one of the most profound statements because theologically, we do not get to the truth about ourselves apart from grace. Mm-hmm. And when grace comes to us, like when you know in her life when she has opportunity in her community or even just talking to us there there for a second here's somebody that will listen okay that's grace and when you obey grace and when you move towards grace and you connect with it enormous truths will begin to emerge that create more and more acres of freedom but you can't get there the other way around truth does not do it by itself and so you've got to become vulnerable to the love that is offered to you and that will melt you into all sorts of discoveries about yourself in uh, another great example from the bible is in Ecclesi- or, um, ezekiel 30 something god says i'm going to do all these things you know put a heart of flesh where you got a heart of stone i'm going to move you back in and, and he's listen all these incredible things he's going to pour out on on the people of israel and he says then 
you will see the loathsomeness of your deeds mm. and and it's it's in the it's after we're loved that we begin to have the strength to face painful yeah. and bad things about ourselves yeah okay i want to uh recommend a child rearing book i'm going to send you a copy of this child rearing book it's changes that heal 